Good morning. I call this hearing to order. Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to this hearing of the Small Business Subcommittee on Health and Technology. It's an honor to chair this subcommittee, and I look forward to continuing the work we're doing to improve opportunities and growth for the nation's small businesses. Today, we'll be examining apps, which are applications of technology accessed on smartphones and other portable handheld devices. U.S. demand for mobile data grew by 63% in 2014 and is expected to increase sevenfold by 2019. Since, 20, oh, since 2007, the United States has seen more than 750,000 app economy jobs created. An astonishing 77% of the apps are made by startups or small companies, and nearly 80% of these companies are located outside of Silicon Valley. And this industry is steadily growing. Findings predict that the app economy will reach $151 billion by 2017. App technology provides businesses and consumers with fast, viable solutions to everyday problems. And research shows it is the entrepreneur, due to an ability to remain flexible in a quickly changing market environment, who is leading the development of these innovative apps. Developers are producing apps that integrate home automation systems, track and monitor health statistics, offer budget and financial transactions tools, and allow consumers to have their groceries purchased and delivered. The continued impact that the app industry will have on the United States economy are significant, and we must help foster that growth. In fact, more than 20 percent of all apps sold in China were developed by American businesses. This is a perfect illustration of the potential growth for the industry. I also want to touch on the implications app technology provides for underserved regions such as my district, American Samoa. Entrepreneurs in the farthest corners of America can tap into the app industry, and our residents are among the innovators. For instance, a Pango Pango native from my district developed a photo app that allows users to add Polynesian cultural filters and designs to their photos before sharing them. I want to thank the witnesses for being here today to help us examine and further understand the implications app technology can have on the economy. I'd like to take a moment to explain the timing lights for you. You will each have five minutes to deliver your testimony. The light will start out as green. When you have one minute remaining, the light will turn yellow. Finally, it will turn red at the end of your five minutes. I ask that you try to adhere to that time limit. Our first witness this morning is Morgan Reed, Executive Director at ACT, the App Association, where he specializes in application development issues. Mr. Reed has testified in both the House and Senate chambers and has authored several white papers on app development. He also serves on the Advisory Council of the Mobile Health Information Management System Society. Our next witness is Dr. Patricia Green. Dr. Green is the Paul T. Babson Chair in Entrepreneurial Studies at Babson College. Before joining Babson, she chaired entrepreneurial and leadership programs at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and Rutgers University. She is also a member of the National Advisory Board for the Small Business Administration's Small Business Development Center. Next, we have David Barrett, the founder of Expensify, a complete online expense management service. He started programming when he was six years old, and it has been his primary activity ever since, with a brief hiatus for project management, technical writing, and world travel. Finally, we have Ms. Cassie Gray, owner of Shop Clementine, an Etsy shop that she runs out of her home in Massachusetts. Ms. Gray creates minimalist jewelry using recycled silver, reclaimed gold, and gemstones and diamonds. 
What started as a hobby has developed into a nine-year-long career through online sales. Ms. Gray, thank you for being with us today. I want to thank all of the witnesses for taking time away from their businesses and families to participate in today's hearing. I now ask unanimous consent that members have five legislative days to submit statements and supporting materials for the record. Without objection, so ordered. This hearing is now adjourned.